actually do. We agree on almost nothing. <laughs> Except that this issue is bigger than all of them. And more important than all of them. You know, when, uh, you're not going to hear these words often either, when Jeremy Corbyn and I went to America to, uh, to get to arrange the release of the last British uh, man in Guantanamo Bay. Ah, here he is. He's been here. Oh, yeah. Well, he delivered it to When he and I went to America to arrange the release of the last brief in Guantanamo Bay, somebody said to me in Britain, why are you doing this? This person's probably a terrorist. And I said, well, firstly, no, he's not. But secondly, even if he were, he deserved a fair trial, not arbitrary incarceration. We say that for everybody. It doesn't matter where you come from, it doesn't matter what your religion is, it doesn't matter what your politics are, it doesn't matter what colour you are, it doesn't matter your origin. Everybody deserves a fair trial, uh, a fair justice, the same rights, the same freedoms that all of us have. And that's what this is about. That's what this is about tonight. But I want, to, I want to face up frankly to the harsh reality. Let's be clear. If Julian Assange is extradited to the United States, into the American judicial system, his chances of acquittal will be near zero. This is not really a justice system as you or I would recognise it. It's a justice system with a conviction rate of 97%, largely achieved by a plea bargaining system which threatens enormous, enormous uh, sentences uh, if you don't comply with it. In Julian's case, I guess the threat would be a 175 year sentence. That's, that's where it would be. <coughs> And undoubtedly, when he was put on trial, he'd be refused bail, uh, thrown into a cell with his access to his counsel and even to his own evidence, strictly limited, handicapping his ability to defend himself. He's already faced poisonous propaganda from the American authorities. The trial would be preceded by him walking on camera in a prison overall arms and legs shackled, with the explicit purpose of convincing the public that he's guilty before the trial even starts. And as for the prospective treatment, well, as, as we stand here today, roughly 80,000 American prisoners are in solitary confinement. If extradited to the US, Julian would almost certainly face the same. Now, the Americans have promised that that would not happen. We made that well, exactly right. The last case I dealt with uh, going to America, there were all sorts of promises around it, and two of them were broken the moment the deportee landed in America. So we can't trust that either. So what that means, what does that mean? It means he's not going to get a fair trial there. So justice for Julian Assange rests in our hands and our hands alone in the British justice system alone. Now, what actually would happen if Julian was accused in Britain of the equivalent to the US Espionage Act, which, which is our, uh, which is our uh, official secret act? What would, what would happen if he was here? Well, you know, we actually have some examples. Over the last 30 or so years, we've had three high-profile official secrets uh, trials. Uh, and so we can get a good idea of how they would work. The first one was under Thatcher. Uh, Led, uh, I'm not here. Um, might recognise it. Um, uh, it was a so-called Clive. It was a Clive Quantum trial over the so-called Belgrano incident. And this man was a civil servant, the MOP, and he had leaked to the press, and no doubt he did. He leaked to the press the fact uh, that the Belgrano was sailing away from the Falklands when it was sunk. The British establishment was furious with this. And so he was put, on, put in court, put on trial uh, for uh, breaking the Official Secrets Act. 
And the judge instructed the jury, imagine that, instructed the jury to find him guilty. And a British jury, I won't, I won't render the expletives they probably thought, but they refused. They recognised that what this man was done, had done was technically a breach of the law, but in fact was in the public interest. In fact was in the public interest. And they found him innocent. The next, the next, the next cases were under Blair. Uh, they were uh, Catherine Gunn, you may remember that, and uh, Derek Pascal. Catherine Gunn was, I think, an MI5 analyst, and uh, Pascal worked in the Foreign Office. And again, they leaked information, mostly about American activity, extradition and torture, um, uh, spying on the United Nations, and spying on, on foreign heads of state and so on. And they were arrested and charged. But in each case, the prosecution realized that the British jury would actually find them not guilty. Why? Because what they had done was in the public interest, again. So whilst in British law, technically, there is no public interest defense, every single time it comes to trial, a British jury imposes one. That's actually what would happen if it was in Britain. If Julian faced the trial here, that's why I think the judges who are ruling on him have to think about that. They have to think, what is the reality? What is it that he's being accused of? And what if he were a British citizen? What if he were here? What would he face? What he would face is he would have had a trial, it would have been a fair trial, it would be over by now, and he'd be walking free on the streets of Britain, or home of Australia, wherever he wants to be. Now, We've already heard about the, the UK-US extradition treaty. And uh, Richard, uh, quite rightly, I think, said that I had opposed it. Um, I was overruled by, by the then leader of my party, but I opposed it. Because I thought it, frankly, read like the extradition treaty between an, an imperial power and a colony. It was one way, and we basically had to do what we were told. <coughs> there was in it, however, Article 4, which said, Extradition shall not be granted if the offence for which extradition is requested is a political offence. And you know, Parliament only ratified that treaty because that clause was there. If that clause had not been there, I cannot imagine a British Parliament actually accepting that treaty. So, uh, clearly this is a political offence. Let's look at what it is. What are the, Ameri what are the Americans, what are the Americans saying about this? Well, actually, Vice President Biden said, uh, in, uh, quote him, I would argue that he is a high-tech terrorist, talking about Jews. This guy has done things and put in jeopardy the lives and occupations of people in other parts of the world. He has made it difficult to conduct our business with our allies and our friends. It has done damage. Well, of course, in reality, what is the sin that the US state deems a breach of the Espionage Act? We've seen it here. That video, the video showing American soldiers gunning down 18 civilians, including a Reuters journalist. The publication of that video and the publication of US diplomatic cables showing a US espionage against the United Nations and allied world leaders. It is, of course, ridiculous to pretend these acts of public interest journalism are crimes. In what world? is public interest journalism exposing crimes a crime itself? Clearly not in any sensible world. So, so perhaps, perhaps it's unsurprising that by 2010, Vice President Biden uh, had actually changed his mind. And he publicly conceded that Julian Assange had inflicted no substantive damage other than to be embarrassing for the US government. Yeah, yeah. Biden had gone from high-tech terrorist to somebody who embarrasses the US government. Yeah. That's, that's, where, that's where they are. So the successful extradition of Julian Assange would effectively criminalize investigative journalism as espionage. It would, act, it would set a legal precedent allowing the prosecution of anyone, anyone who breaks the duty of silence on classified American information uh, and state-sponsored crime. It would impose American censorship 
on British journalism. And for what? In Joe Biden's words, to avoid embarrassing the American government. Shame. Legality is something. And so that's where we are. That's what we're considering today. And that's what, that's what the British judicial system should be thinking when they address these issues in a month's time. That's what they should be thinking. And legalities aside, I should never forget, with any of these issues, any issue like this, you should never forget the human side of the episode, the human side of the issue. Over the last 13 years, Julian Assange has undergone a terrible ordeal. His punishment has been beyond anything he deserved, even if he was guilty and he was not. I would prefer the High Court judges deciding on Julian Assange's appeal to former Justice of Supreme Court Lord Sumption, who said, and I quote, freedom of expression includes the freedom to publish information, even if it's controversial, disquieting, or embarrassing to the authorities or to other people. That's what the judges should be thinking. Now, one of the reasons we are on the same panel we're on the same side in this argument is that our country believes itself to be a free society. We believe we have a free press. We believe we have a real court system that delivers justice. That's what we believe. It's time we lived up to our beliefs. Julian Assange is innocent. It's long past time we set him free. Yeah.